Hello YouTube, this is the DBTR Show, episode 192, and today I'm going to review Golden Nats 3, so let's get started. Okay, that's my Nintendo Wii Service, so let's start this review. Now, Golden Nats 3, it's a pretty good beat em up. It's my least favourite in the Golden Nats series, unless you're talking about Beast Rider, which is definitely a lot worse than this. But if you just talk about the um, original Golden Axe trilogy, um, this is my least favourite in the series. Okay, let's start this review. The story for this game. The story for this game, it's okay. It's a very basic, just like with all beat em ups. Um, a character called the Dark Prince, he doesn't have a name. He's in the. Um... I did some research on this game, and what I found was the bad guy is called the Dark Prince. And that's all we know about him. He's risen again and he's started to wreak havoc on the land. And the four legendary heroes must battle their way through his minions and eventually kick his ass and stab him in the heart several times. Um, let's start off with the menu for this game. The menu for this game is pretty simple. There is... The options menu where you can change your game's difficulty. There is normal and hard. Um, this game is definitely the most difficult out of the three Golden Axe games. Uh, one major reason, there is no easy mode. So this can make the game really difficult. For this review, I'm going to say it normal. It's also a versus mode where you can play against, play, in two, play against your friends and just fight each other to the death. It's kind of like Street Fighter, only a lot more primitive. Um, I have shown up a versus mode in, in a Let's Play once of Streets of Rage 2, where me and Adam had a little fight. It's very similar to that. Um, there are four playable characters in the game. You've got the male warrior, the female warrior, this um, muscular dude and this panther dude. Um, one character which has been removed from the from the game who only appears to talk to the other characters and basically um, extend the plot a little bit is Gilly's Fundhead. He appears in the player select screen but you can't pick him. He's just there for exposition. Which is very, very disappointing to me because Gilly's Fundhead has been my favourite Golden Axe character ever since I was a kid and I was very very annoyed to see that he was not a playable character in this game. Uh, for this review I'm going to use the panther because he's my favourite all around character. Uh, the multiplayer for this game, the multiplayer for this game is really good. There are two modes which you can play in two player mode. You've got the main story mode where you can team up and um, play through the main story or you've got the versus mode where you can kill each other. Uh, graphics of this game. The graphics of this game are really good. This is, this is pretty impressive considering the, the genesis of limited capabilities or the Mega Drive, whichever name you prefer depending on which part of the pond you're, which side of the world you're from. Um, controls for this game. The controls for the game, they're really good. Um, Arrow pad moves you around. B button attacks. These are the classic control controls, bearing in mind. A button jumps. Double tap forward and A again. You can do a bigger jump. Um, double tap forward. Oh, one more. Let's get a red tubby here because it's starting to annoy me. Double tap for. Leave me alone. I'm trying to explain controls here. The might get close to the enemies, you can grab them and do damage to them. It's a little bit difficult because. Most enemies attack with swords or spears and getting close to them isn't very easy because they have such long weapons. Right, back to the controls now that the enemies are out of the way. Uh, double tap forward and press B, you can do like a charge attack. Let just grab some magic. Magic is controlled with the Y button, you just press the button and it uses it. Um, there is sort of a way to gauge how much magic you use. You'll notice in the top left hand corner of your screen you've got your magic bar which is represented by the um, little blue bottles. 
if your blue bottles aren't filled to the top, you will use just a few magic bottles. But if they're filled to the top, it will drain the entire magic meter to zero. That's basically the way it works. Uh, the magic system in this game is pretty good. It's not as good as it was in Golden Axe 2. In Golden Axe 2, you could charge up the magic books and pick how much you wanted to use. In this game, it, you don't have as much control, which is somewhat annoying. Um, if you press A and B together, you can do a little special attack, which allows you to attack both enemies on the front of you and on the back of you. This is really useful if the enemies are starting to rip from both sides. There are dragons in the game. If you want to get a dragon, just walk up to it and press B and you'll mount it and you can use it like normal. The dragons, they don't really have that many moves. Uh, you can move them around, they can charge and head headbutt things and they can just attack like normal. They can also jump and press A and B to get off them. Uh, music of this game. The music of this game is really good. It's got some nice tunes in there and some of the tunes sound pretty medieval which is fitting for the game's style. Uh, game for this game. The game for this game is very good. It's a side scrolling beat em up just like the Golden Axe games and it's a good game. The only problem with the gameplay I have is it's a lot more difficult than the Golden Axe games and therefore it's not as much fun. And also the lack of Gilius Thunderhead is very annoying. Uh, Gusta Bites game. The Gusta Bites game is, is the gameplay. Uh, and you'll look at this game are all the different items you can get. There are several items which you can get. There's a pork chop which will recover your health. There's a heart which will extend your health bar which is very useful because you need all the help you can get to beat this game. So every time you see a heart, grab it, because sometimes some of the items, if they go off screen, you cannot go back. And sometimes they can disappear if you leave them too long. Uh, the third item is the magic bottle, which will give you more magic. Um, one bit that's rather disappointing about this game is that in some of the older Golden Axe games, from what I remember, you actually could collect one-ups, and in this game, I don't think you can. Uh, you can rescue hostages to get one-ups. Once you rescue five hostages, you will be rewarded with an extra life. But there's a small problem with this mechanic. Uh, you get the extra life, but you s your life starts with how much health you had from the previous life. So it doesn't help as much as I would like. Yeah, I'd rather it refilled your energy and gave you the extra life so you actually start a new life and not just having a little bit more health. <laughs> but just get rid of these ladies and now um continue my review. They're starting to irritate me. Okay. Other good spice game. The good spice game are levels. There are a lot of stages. And one thing that's great about the game is that there's actually alternative paths. There is a customizable route that you can pick to suit your own needs, which can make the game easier or harder. I really like the um, alternative pass and it made the game a lot more funny. It, it was nice to have that little strategy in, uh, to pick where you want to go. And it also um, adds a bit of replay value so you can um, go to different places. Uh, another thing I really like the game are the bosses. The bosses can be really difficult. My least favourite boss has to be the bird, but it's just really generally annoying. You fight it twice in the game, and the second time it's just a general pain in the arse. It, uh, one thing that's rather annoying about the game is that the enemies and bosses can block, and you can't. And, well, even if, if you can block, I haven't even figured it out yet. And the bosses like to exploit their blocking ability a lot. Speaking of bosses, here's one right now. Let's use my magic. Uh, I'll talk about the magic in, in this um, part of the review. The woman warrior, she has fire magic and she can burn the enemies to a crisp. The man warrior can use ice magic and water magic. 
and the panther he can use a, it looks like wind magic and the the big male guy with the big muscles he can use earth magic he isn't he's pretty good now just get rid of this night and I'll continue my review I think I'll save my earth magic for later because I'm down to the last bottle here Come on! It's getting tiresome already! You more stum than that guy from the Monty Python films! Okay, let's go up. Um, Characters in the game. Uh, my two favourite characters in the game would have to be the woman and the panther. Uh, the reason I like the woman so much is her magic is extremely strong and she's the only character I've ever actually beaten this game with. I've only ever beaten this game once and I had to use the woman because she had the best spells. Uh, most I play as the panther because he's the best all around for me. Uh, the other two characters. The male where he's very good. He reminds me a lot of Arnold Schwarzenegger for two reasons. Reason number one, he's very muscly and he reminds me of Arnold Schwarzenegger when he used to be the world's strongest man. And reason number two... Um, the male warrior actually has an ice attack and that reminds me of Anna Schwarzenegger's role in the um, Batman and Robin movie when he was when he played Mr. Freeze. So you can literally chill out the enemies. Uh, the bulky guy who's also a, the bulky guy, he's he has earth magic and he's a pretty good character. The only problem with him, he's rather sluggish and his attacks are a little bit slower so he's a little bit more difficult to use, but he's still a good character. I like his earth magic. Um, I do find that the game was all with different options. There is a hard mode for you insane players out there who want to make this game any more difficult than it already is. Also, the option where you can listen to the sound, that's not to change controls. Um, I do find that the game with the dragons. The dragons have been my, one of my most favorite parts of the Golden Axe series. There are four different dragons in the game. There's this... I, I showed off one dragon in the first level. The first dragon I showed off, it has this small chain that comes out of its mouth that can attack the enemies. There's also a second dragon in the game, which has a slightly longer chain, which is my favorite dragon in the game, because it has the long, longest range. Uh, the third dragon, it, if you walk over to the enemies, you can pick them up with its mouth and throw them against the wall. This dragon is probably the worst because Getting close to enemies in beat em ups isn't always the best idea. Uh, the fourth dragon, it breathes fire, but it takes a very long time to actually hit the enemies with this attack. It's good, but it just takes a long time to do it. One tactic in this game, which is really good, is to keep the enemies off ledges. Uh, you can't always do this, but it does help a lot when you're playing the game. Um, other good things about this game, the versus mode is pretty good, although it's pretty um, basic. And you found that the game was all the um, different paths you could take. It makes the game a, a little bit more... Um, better replay value wise and it gives you a sort of a fresher experience every time you play if you take a different path. Um, and you found that the game with the hostages. Even though the hostages don't refill your health when they, when you finally get five of them to give yourself an extra life, they still help out with the game's difficulty even though they don't give you a full life, they just give you an extra one. Uh, throughout the game there are these gnomes which you can attack and they'll give you certain supplies. The green ones will give you either a heart or a pork chop. The heart makes you have um, a longer health bar and the pork chop recovers your health. And the blue gnomes they just give you more magic. And that's all the good stuff I can think of you two. I'm going to finish this stage and then I'm going to go to my complaints. Uh, some of the bosses in this game can be pretty difficult. 
Um, as well as fighting the regular bosses, that you will have to fight some of your friends throughout the game. They're being possessed by the Dark Prince and they can be somewhat difficult. Depending on which character you've picked, you will have to fight two of your friends. And they'll pop up throughout the game. Um, I'm going to talk about some of my favourite stages in the game now. My least favourite stage would have to be stage 7 and 8. Stage 7 is an absolute nightmare because the game basically throws every boss that you've fought before and it's just very annoying. And stage 8 is just really hard because... It, by the time you get to stage 8 you've got pretty much nothing left. And the final boss is an absolute pain in the ass. Uh, my favourite stage, I, I tend to like the stage with a lot of hostages in. This um, graveyard stage it reminds me a lot of Castlevania and it's one of my more favourite ones. Another stage I really liked, I would have shown it but I decided to show off this one instead, is this one that looks like a forest sort of swamp but, and that's a really good stage because it's got a lot of hostages to, to rescue and you can get more lives and it's just a really nice stage space, not too difficult. Right, shouldn't be much longer to go. I'm going to save my magic for the end of the stage so I can show off one of the stronger spells. Hey, you get four continues throughout the game. If you do lose a life and your magic bar is empty, you will be given a free bottle. If you lose a continue, your magic just carries over. Right, this is the boss of this stage, these two, these four skeleton guys. Anyway, let's show them my full power. Eat my giant wavy lightning tornado thunderstorm of death. Well, that was easy. Uh, throughout the game there are some bonus stages. At the end of every stage you get the opportunity to, to get some more magic by attacking these gnomes. Sometimes they'll run around, sometimes they'll be underground. Uh, most of the time you'll get magic. There is the odd occasion where you see a green gnome where you can get more health but the green gnomes appear to be very rare in this game. Anyway YouTube, that's all the footage I'm going to show. Now on to my complaints. Okay. My complaints about Golden Axe 3. Uh, I don't really have that many complaints for this game. Um, one complaint is personal and the other complaint is just generally the difficulty. Golden Axe 3 is a very, very difficult beat em up. I've been playing beat em up since I was a kid, and I am really good at them. I can pretty much pick up any beat em up game in my collection or in an arcade and pretty much instantly know how to play them and pretty much very quickly be become very good at them. Um, and Golden Axe 3 is a very difficult game. I've only ever beaten it once with the woman, and when I actually beat it, it was pretty much a fluke and I had pretty much nothing left. It was kind of last resort, throw everything I had at him and that was it. I actually did manage to beat it, but only on normal mode. Um, my second complaint about this game is that Gillis Thunderhead is not a playable character. And that is a real shame because my favourite character in the Golden Axe universe has always been Gillis Thunderhead. And it was very disappointing that I couldn't play as him. Um, would I recommend Golden Axe 3? <sighs> Not really. It is probably the weakest in the Golden Axe trilogy for the Mega Drive. The game's difficulty level makes it a very hard game. I'd recommend if you are a hardcore gamer and if and if you liked the Golden Axe series, but if you're not a big fan of beat em ups, and if you're not a hardcore gamer, I'd recommend skipping this one. But other than that, it's still a good game, but it's just be prepared for a very steep difficulty curve. 
My rating for the game is a 3 out of 5. Um, my next review will be 007 Everything or Nothing. So I'll see you guys then. Bye.